Number 28. Two identical objects such as billiard balls have a one-dimensional collision in which one is initially motionless. After the collision, the moving object is stationary and the other uh, moves with the same speed as the other originally had. Show that both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. All right. So um, for this problem here, let's just take a look at the picture. So we have conditions before the collision. All right, I chose the black ball to be moving to the right. It has a certain velocity and a certain mass. And the red ball is motionless, therefore its velocity is zero. And it still has uh, some mass, but remember that the masses of these two are going to be the same because uh, it told us that they were identical objects. And therefore now after the collision, okay, we now have the ball that was originally in motion now being motionless because its velocity is zero. And then the red ball will now obtain that same velocity, right? Because it said here, same speed. So it obtains the same velocity as the black ball had before the collision, all right? And the masses of them are still the same. So we have to show that the uh, momentum is conserved. So first we start with a formula here that details that the momentum, you know, before the collision, is equal to the momentum after. Now to start expanding this formula, we have to know whether it's an inelastic or elastic collision. Remember, inelastic sticks together, elastic separates after the collision. Therefore, since the two balls are separated, one is not moving and the other is moving, uh, we know it's elastic, okay? So we're gonna have essentially four items in this formula, meaning we're gonna have the momentum of the first object before the collision plus the momentum of the second object before the collision will equal the momentum of the first object after the collision plus the momentum of the second object after the collision. All right, so let's detail that a little more. So realize that momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. So this will be the mass of the first object uh, multiplied by the velocity of that first object before the collision uh, plus the mass of the second object multiplied by the velocity of that second object before the collision is equal to the mass of the, excuse me, is equal to the mass of the first object multiplied by the velocity uh, of that first object after the collision plus then the mass of the second object multiplied by the velocity of the second object after the collision. Okay, so let's call this, you know, let's call in black, that's object number one. All right, object number one. And this will be in red, object number two. Okay, so the mass of one times the velocity of one, right, uh, before the collision, it they have a number, right? So let's just call it, let's just leave this as it is, M1, V1 before the collision. Now that's gonna, we're gonna add to that the mass of the second object multiplied by the velocity of that second object before the collision, but before the collision, that object in red was zero. So this whole, whole term just drops out, right? So that means now this will be equal to, and let me move the, I'll move this actually over a little bit now, okay? So this will now be equal to the mass of the first object multiplied by the velocity of the first object after the uh, collision. But notice that first object now is not moving anymore. So what happens to this term? That cancels. And then plus the mass of the second object multiplied by that velocity of the second object after the collision, which it does have a value, right? m2 v2 after. Now remember, we have to see, is this true? Okay, and are the masses the same? Yes, they told us they were identical objects. And then, great, are the velocities the same as well of a and b? Uh, yes, they said that the, read it right here, it says the moving object is stationary after the collision and the other moves with the same speed as the other originally had. All right, so that means that the initial, um, the essentially the initial velocity of B, excuse me, of the first object before the collision is equal to the final velocity of that second object after the collision. All right, so this is definitely true. So that just proved it, okay? And now guess what's gonna happen here if I were to now do it for kinetic energy? Same thing, right? We have to say that the kinetic energy, I'm probably gonna speed through this one a little bit. The kinetic energy before the collision has to equal the kinetic energy after the collision. And remember the object that's not moving in both cases has zero kinetic energy, right? So basically the only kinetic energy before the collision is experienced by the black ball here. So therefore this is one half the mass of that first object multiplied by its velocity before the collision squared will equal then the kinetic energy of the red ball after 
which is one half times the mass of that red object, the second object, multiplied by the velocity of that second object after the collision squared. And I realized I put an I in here. I meant to just write a one. Let me get rid of that. Okay. And we have to then determine, is this a true statement? And it is, right? It's literally the same logic as I did over here. The masses are the same. So that checks out. And then are these velocities the same? And yes, right? Remember, it still goes back to this statement over here in the problem. All right, the same speed. They both have the same speed. So that checks out. All right. So that's how momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.